hello all you archaeologists. I'm the John Strat. Welcome to the proximity. I'm having... <laughs> Sorry, I was just doing my hair. Oh, look, a dodo. Uh, I'm having a Final Fantasy XIV Realm Reborn adventure. Something to do with... Uh, ice. Oh, I should have... I should have... Oh. Something to do with ice. I'm, I'm going to fight Shiva, hopefully. That's the plan. Uh, it is a past midnight, and I do have work tomorrow. But I wouldn't have been sleeping anyway because of... I never can. Um, obviously, I'm not helping, but like... It's it's fine. It's just, it's just me. <laughs> um, one thing I would have liked to have done, and I didn't do, but I would have liked to have done, is uh, set up the microphone so I can talk quietly. I'll do that after uh, this stream. Um, anyway, let's stop faffing about. Uh, I would love. To be able to finish this quest line at the very least today and maybe do the next chapter tomorrow after work i don't know if the camp will still be on or not but i think so Let's see anyway i don't know like a couple of hours is what i've got reasonably three hour push oh yeah there's the observatorium Is this the way? Yeah, I was right there. Why? I don't know why I didn't show on the map. Alright, so taking off the glamour is uh, a little bit of a headache. Tindrils of Intrigue. There's our... Uh... Oh, it's not. We'll get the next one. Also, we'll get some haddock. Delicious haddock. Uh, let's accept this, shall we? Captain Ilbird, your report, if you will. I, Commander, firstly, with regard to the heretic we captured, I regret to say that. The man could tell us not that we did not already know of Shiva. We've already we've since handed him over to the Ishgardian authorities. Henceforth, the Holy See will pursue the matter independently. Inquiries concerning the Ivy, however, have proven more fruitful. We've ascertained the channel by which heretics acquired the information on the shipment routes. Go on. We will recall the flame we first identified as being in Ivy's employ. For him, we were able to trace a trail of conspirators it's taking us closer to his master. Alas, the trail came to an abrupt end. Fearing that the investigation had been compromised, we took the necessary de step of detaining all suspected of conspiracy. Uh, there were five on our list, including a flame stationed at Revenant's Toll. The man's primary duty was to keep an inventory of donations from abroad, the particulars of which he did he would share with benefactors, thereby ensuring, ensuring that, that the needs did not go unfulfilled. By virtue of this role, he was privy to the details of all shipments bound for the settlement, needless to say, that included those originating from House for Tom. Uh, he knew the precise route uh, the caravan had taken and sold that information to a merchant. I think I can guess which one. In another, with a little encouragement, he would soon confess to knowingly aiding and abetting heretics. Well, that is one mystery solved at least, but what of the ivy? Are we any closer to prizing off his mask? I dare say we are, Commander. A relentless pursuit has forced him to commit a grave error. In a desperate bid to cover his tracks, the Ivy resorted to exercising certain ad admin powers available only to high-ranking members of the Immortal Flames. We consider that our investigation is known to a barely of handful of them. The field of suspects is greatly narrowed. You mean to say the agent is among our band's innermost circle? Somebody who has been with him since the Immortal Flames' establishment? Is the most plausible explanation? The infiltration likely occurred during the company's founding, with the groundwork being the act being laid beforehand slip into position of authority unremarked remain above suspicion all these years i i too was surprised though i really should not have been the free grand company's old was even more vulnerable to infiltration the flimser the minster and 
Jania have long stunned armies that lent themselves well to the formation of the Maelstrom and the Order of the Twin Adder. To all, for all, to all intents and purposes, it's the same people, loyal ones, mind under the same leadership. Only the banner was different, not so the flames. Alder's military is made up of disparate orders, most of which were glorified mercenary companies and answered only to their own paymasters. Hardly an ideal environment in which to establish something as high minded as a grand company. Difficulties Raban faced when founding the Immortal Flames are well known, even after he convinced his fellow Tenzakut members to share the cost. There remained a small matter of finding enough bodies to fill the ranks. Indeed, given the present nature of the Imperial threat, uh, that meant recruiting every passing cell sword. Amidst the chaos of its foundings, it would have been child's play to infiltrate the company. A good deal easier than now, aye. Mortal Flames has ever been caught between conflicting interests, the public and the private. Though the monetarists ultimately agreed to support the organization's founding, it was not out of charity that they did so, but self preservation. Had Niall Den Van D D Darnus's ambitions been any less apocalyptic, uh, you may be sure that they would never have risked supplying the bam of an army. It is but a wonder that they did not attempt to extinguish the flames the moment the danger had passed. Last returning to the present, well, most of this time it's just meant to be reading, isn't it? Even as we speak, the Domain allies are shattering side for several high ranking flames, any of whom could be the Ivy. Uh, desiring to deal with blow against the Empire, the refugees were eager to. Eager to lend the aid, I expect to hear from them ere long. Very good. Pre continue in your investigation with the first. Meanwhile, we have the second to attempt to, to unrest. Third can join the fourth in inspecting the crystal shipments. If you notice anything unusual, I want to know about it. Chief was summoned like it, in like manner to the other primals. Heretics are looking for further supplies. Understood, Commander. I shall send word to Sir Emmerich, informing him, informing him of our success and identifying the heretics. A betters. Hopefully the information will be of some use to the Ishgardians. It is time, Commander. Yes, I am aware. An emergency council of alliance leadership has been called. There have been developments in Galamald. It seem, Commander of the Crystal Graves, my presence has been requested. Uh, I would have you accompany me, Naev, as the realm's status champion. Uh, it is only, only meet that you present. What? It is only meet that you p be present. For the discussion. What does that mean? Uh, oh, and the antecedent has already given her consent, lest you worry. Cool. Natural thing to do. Lovely. Like me, you are doubtless eager to conclude our business with her ice heart, but another path, the sanctum is found, she will remain beyond our reach. And fully, and the Archons are sparing no effort to secure the alternate route. Till such time as they succeed, I suggest we give some sort to the realm's other problems. I shall go on out to Gudania in readiness for the coming council. Meet me at Nofaka's altar, and we shall make our way to the Lotus Stand together. Together! Yeah, so I've got to go to Limsa Luminsa to get the uh, those uh, changed back. I'm not sure what happens if I just equip other stuff. Uh, several adventurers having difficulty summoning their retainers. If you wish to offer your assistance, you'll find the troubled souls in Limsa Luminsa. Also the same regardless of whom you helped, do not hesitate. Um, do I care? Uh, uh, yeah, that's probably important. Oh yeah, I've, oh yeah, I'd have to fight. Um, Leviathan probably to get that. Uh, yeah, the wave bow. That'd be nice. Oh, and there's also Shiva. Interesting. Uh, Shiva and Leviathan. I should consider that. Uh, yes, I think I want this. Oh, we're very close to having it. Bows and Bogan. Oh. And I'm. Oh, there's also this. Oh, do I want the Rosen Brogan? I don't I wish I knew what they look like. I think... 
I want the rose and broken. I wouldn't have got the ring had I known. I have the guns here as well. No, that's what I'm building anyway. What am I talking about? Can you just buy the master? I guess so. Yeah, so we want that. We're very close. Cool. Um, um, where are we going? Uh, oh, oh yeah, I'll go down here. There we go. Well, hello, Screams. I'm well. Oh, you got your laundry done. I, uh, I, uh, it is about half past midnight, and I do have work tomorrow. I'm going to go in uh, about 10 o'clock, though, which is when I always go in. Uh, it means I have to shut the office, but it also means it works. Uh, I'm going to try and finish this chapter, but it's not going to be the last one. Hopefully, I've got one more day of this. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Yes, that is exciting. I don't actually know what job you do. I mean, I'm. Uh, you're about to start, I mean. I'm not sure I knew the job you did before. Either. But I'm pretty sure you told me before that, and I've forgotten. Uh, oh, thanks for coming, Nive. Uh, when you're ready to speak with the country yonder, she will show us to the Lotus Stand. The Alliance leaders await you at the Lotus Stand. Will you be joining them now? Yeah, sure. I put on my bard gear. I hope I'm not being too loud. Change has come to the Garlean Empire, and we must discuss the implications. The rumors are true, then? The War of Succession is ended? It is. A new emperor reigns in Garlemald. Who? <gasps> Colin, who he just happened to be passing at the time. The birth and all too rapid expansion of the Garlean Empire is commonly attributed to the strategic brilliance of Solus Zosgalvis, yet he did not rule alone. Several members of the royal household also distinguished themselves during his reign. So I was going to look at the uh, thing uh, while it. Okay. That sounds yes. That sounds like it could be um, uh, what's uh, soul numbing? I used to work in a place for I for a month. I worked at a place called Tico that made big plastic boxes, and they went on the conveyor belt, and you had to scrape off things and put them there. And every time I had to pee, I had to come back, and there were forty boxes piled up. Uh, I didn't last there. I was bad at that job. But it turned out I had asthma, which didn't help. Nevertheless, it was the eldest son who stood to inherit the throne, until his most untimely passing. That's what you used to do, right? I thought us fortunate when I learned that the Emperor had died without naming a successor. Would that the Garlean Empire had died with him. Those are some impressive shoulder pads. The cloth like physics really good there. It takes him forty minutes to get anywhere. Twas the grandson and his uncle who had the strongest claims, was it not? Indeed, yet claims count for little without the power to assert them. High Legatus Varus Ye Galvis is a respected military leader, not so his uncle. Little, not little. So young Varus has torn the crown from his uncle's grasp and taken his place at the head of the Empire.
Given the troubled nature of his succession, the new emperor will require time to seal his grip on power. Yet have no doubt but that he shall, for there are none left with strength enough to oppose him. Oh, that's cool. Well, any job's good as if, if you love doing it. Um, Packing with orders and wares. That's cool. I, uh, I never got ever done. My, I think my brother used to do something like that. Oh, no, no. My brother used to work for, for games. What was it? With, you know, card games. I think he had to do card game stuff. Is that what he does now? Oh, I can't remember what he does now. Yeah, I think that's what he does now. And he used to work for iPhone. But yeah, and I think he likes I think he likes doing the card game thing more. Um That's cool. One of the plot points I like in this game is when we first dealt with the Empire, we didn't deal with an Emperor. Because why would an Emperor just suddenly turn up in a country? He wouldn't send he would send a general. You know, he'd send just one legion. Uh and so that sort of makes sense. It, the scale of the thing makes a lot of sense. Oh yeah, fuck out then. Since the success of Operation Archon, the remnants of the 14th Legion and the forces occupying Alamigo have done naught but fortify their positions. But you can be sure they'll be ready to march on us again if their Emperor gives the word. When, not if. They say this Varus was so set upon Eorzean annexation that he spoke out against the Meteor Project. Fair enough. That's great. Uh, uh, that's the hardest part of my job. I mean, I've got a really cushy job. I work in an office and I'm very lucky to do so. It suits me very much. But that room keeps filling up with people. Like, my office is doing very well because a decade ago, there were four of us in a room. I mean, at some point, it was just two of us. And now there's like 60 people in that room, and I don't know about 40 of them. And they're all really nice, and they all know my name. They all learn me quite quickly, and I don't know any of them. <laughs> it's, it's very emotionally draining. Uh, that's also great. That's cool. Well, good luck with that, then. Well, I mean, it sounds like you already have luck, but... Plainly, your first day the it. new Emperor's intentions are of great concern to us all. I propose that we set aside the Cartano dispute for the present, and discuss what measures the Alliance might take to prepare for a resumption of hostilities with Garlemald. Moreover, I move that we re-examine the question of how our former allies in Ishgard might be persuaded to retake their place at our side. Could Eorzea but stand as one, twould deal a grave blow to our enemy's ambitions. I know, right? People. Ugh. It's worse than when they're nice, because when they're not nice, you can just safely ignore them. And it's like, damn it, you're lovely. Oh, <laughs> so much extra work now. Well, I suppose we should be grateful that they have finally acknowledged the inevitability of Imperial attack. Who knows? They may even do something about it. If only the leaders of Ishgard would follow their example and stop hiding behind their gates. Praying for the coming storm to pass them by. They just can't have the, their own problems. But that is a discussion for another time. At present, I am more concerned by the fact that the Alliance's mooted preparations will be made known to the Garleans many moons before their coming. My only issue with my work is my boss really does like making money. So if he can spy a sort of project he can do that making money, he'll do it. Um, which means that as soon as he re realized that he could potentially make money out of um, Bitcoin, not Bitcoin, whatever the new thing is, 
he went right in. He doesn't want to buy it. He wants to find a way to get money out of people who already have. And it's like, oh, I, d I just want to leave that alone. But we don't have any choice over what he does. Um, So long as the ivy eludes our grasp, no secret is safe. So, one of the good things is I, I did have to... They put me in a team, so I, like, I only really have to interact with three, three or four people. Which is three or four people more than I'd like, but like I do have to learn. Like I do go weird if I'm left by myself for too long. Uh, but because we only work in the office three days a week, the way it all shuffles around, you're sort of unlikely to bond with people nearby. Not really, actually. I think it's I'm unlikely to bond with people nearby. I think so. I like working in the office because I'm just incredibly lazy, uh, and I, I also like you know the option of having something on a, on a separate screen, and then I can use half my brain to do my job and half my brain to do stuff that I actually want to do. Uh, though the risk with that is like if I'm accidentally just not doing work and I don't want to get fired for not doing work, uh, so I have to do make sure I actually do do work. Uh, but you know they check so. But uh. Yeah, it suits me quite well. Would not have skipped your notice of the nations of Aeorzea, and no, no nearer to being one of the purpose, one with purpose, despite their protestations to the contrary. Plainly, the threat of the resurgent Galamov not be enough to stir them. It's really because we all get two monitors, and um, you do occasionally see someone in the office just like using a full monitor to watch prisoners. I'm pretty sure everyone in the office at some point has watched prisoners escape. And it's like definitely a so a, a faux pas to dedicate a full monitor to not working. But if you put it in a corner of a screen, that's fine. You can watch whatever you want uh, within reason, I'm sure. Uh, um, there's a uh, somebody in the office, uh, and she watches. There's like a channel four program about like naked dating and she watches watches that in the office and i'm like i'm not really interested in do um not uh, you know what's what's not documentaries what's it called um you know like dating not dating programs like love island whatever genre that is uh but like like i i i wouldn't in a million years put that on my monitor because i just assume people will what like I, 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 I just I wouldn't have the the sheer gall to put anything like that on my on my screen. I don't watch anime in the office because I just know if I, if I watch anime, something weird will come up and I'll have to explain it and I'll be like, yeah, I just don't. I watch wrestling and I get away with that. It's like, but I wouldn't have loved years ago. But like, yeah. But um. But yeah, um. Good for her, I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's a reason for this. Deep-rooted mistrust among the citizens, the nation's leader can come all to... The, uh, the worst thing about anime is you do get used to it being weird. Like, sometimes you'll recommend an anime to somebody, and they're like, John, what were they doing then? And I go, oh, God, is that weird? Oh, of course it's weird. I didn't even... Oh. That's why it's good having somebody look it over as well, because just to remind you that that shit's not... <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, take the Lamentians for example. Uh, Admiral Mawib outlawed piracy over a decade ago. Foreigners, she outlawed piracy. Foreigners still picked to the nation as a haven for grog swilling wooden legged cutthroats. In the likewise, Gridanians mocked as hermits who talked to trees and Alden scorned as swindlers who worship coin. Not that the sentiments are entirely without grounds. Of course, take that pillar of Alden society. Telegi ad Jalegi. Example, but that is besides the point. The fact is, the people wary of outsiders because they cause not to be. On that basis, one could argue that the conflict at Cartano is necessary evil. 
Uh, each nation has their own warmongering faction that advocates the acquisition of Omega. In order to placate them, we present them with something resembling warfare, thereby curb the appetite for full scale conflict. So uh, he's talking about a PvP area in the game. Um, but en enough idle musing. Let us speak more of a pressing matter, the Ivy. Since we spoke at the Observatorium, Captain Illbird has further shortened his list of suspects. Luckily, wrestling is barely so weird anymore. Uh, it's not 90s wrestling. Um, by happy coincidence, the ones he deems the most likely candidates is likely come to Gridania. Uh, the hunt draws near its end, Naev. All that remains is the corner of a quarry. Uh, and also, if somebody does talk to me in the office about wrestling, all they're going to get is a long conversation about wrestling. Nobody wants that if they're not into wrestling. So they just leave me <laughs> He's watching wrestling. We'll leave him alone. Uh, seek out a bird. It's, although it's very fun if somebody starts a football conversation. Because in my in my head, you can you can like anything you like. Like, you know, obviously within reason. Uh, if you're into, like, MMOs or, or anime or whatever, cards, fine. But, like, it doesn't matter, like, how much people mock you for it. You do you. But apart from football... Football's the most popular sport on the entire planet. Like, I, I, I reserve the right to be a dick about it. Because I don't want to talk about football. I hate it. It's boring. But, um... So I'll bring up... That's when I bring up wrestling at work. Uh, all that remains is the corner of uh, uh, quarry. I'm sure it's fine. It's just... It's it's not. It's less that I dislike it. It's, it's more that you just can't escape it. Like... There's a World Cup coming on, and now the office is dedicated to, um, you know, gambling on it. You get there each, everyone gets a cut thing, and they're like, John, you don't need to watch football to be in the tournament. It's like, I don't care, though, and I aggressively don't care. I, um, I've had people over at my house for board games before, and they're like, John, can we put the rate? No. Uh, you just, you, if you, no. No, to, no, no sports in this house. That is my one rule, um... If you want to watch the sports, it's cool. You just can come to my house on a different day. Uh, I, I, I reserve the right to be a dick about this one issue. I don't want it in my house. And if I let you... Oh, just this one. If I let you do it once, I've set a precedent. No. I would prefer, I'd prefer to be unpopular. Uh, the hunt nears its end, Naive. All that remains is the corner of quarry. Seek out an ill bird near the adder's nest. It will give you the particulars. I had to wait for the internet to exist before I could talk to anyone about wrestling. But, um, there was no, like, there's now a couple of people in real life that watch it, but, like, it took, like, a decade, so long, like, 2010 before, like, I could have a conversation about wrestling to anyone who knew what I was talking about. Should there be any developments in Coethus, you may sh be sure, and, like, yeah. You can just throw a stone in the UK and you'll have to find somebody to talk to about football. Yeah, yeah. And it's... You may be sure that I will send word without delay. In the meantime, I wish you success in apprehending the ivy. I found the ivy. Right here. I there's, the, there's the ivy. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to be able to... Do, I'm going to have to try and play this slightly faster because I'm uh, under my feet. But yes. Yeah, I know... Um, in America, there's a lot of, like, uh, an absurd amount of money in arenas and the whole pomp and circumstances of sports. I mean, not to say that FIFA doesn't, you know, uh, doesn't have an absurd amount of money pouring through it. Because uh, it does. Uh... Anyway, my rant.
Thanks for coming, sir. And doubtless the commander has informed you, but we must unmask the ivy from this point on. We must proceed with extreme caution. Um, nope, none of them are for me. One of these is for me. Ill bird is an ill bird. He's convinced he's discovered the ivy's identity and preparing to move against the Italian spy. That was quick. As I come to you. The smile of the spy we've been seeking all the summer is none other than Flame Marshal Alain Roal, Roban's second in command. Yes, yeah, so there's a rule, right? If you ever watch a fictional program and they say, "Look, one of us, one of us is a spy. Somebody's been leaking information." It's always the person who in command who's like, it's always the person in command, like, because they're the person who's above suspicion. Although in this, they've been a bit cheeky. Uh, Elaine has been in every scene, but she's never spoken. Uh, but uh, that person is also secretly a spy. He's a traitor as well. Uh, spy, uh, yeah. Prior to joining the Immortal Flame, she was a mercenary, no small renown. Uh, they say her skill with the pole arm has been has to be seen to be believed. Of Ishgardian birth, she's the highest ranked foreigner in the Immortal Flames, barring the Flame General herself, of course. You know that chair. When he formed the Grand Company, Raban chose people based on their worth, whence they held was of no interest. The Monetarists saw things differently, however. Having funded the Enterprise, they reserved the right to reject candidates nominated for high-ranking positions. It was no secret they did not favour foreigners, Ishgardians especially, after the way the Holy See forsook the Alliance. Yet the Monetarists did not raise so much of a murmur of protest when Roel was appointed to a post. Uh, passing strange is it not? Could it be that the Ivy has some hold over the Monetarists? Bright blue, that's the best colour for catching spies. These revelations are secondary to our current mission. Of the foremost interest to us is Raoul's presence here now. As you may be aware, it is the duty of the Flame Marshal to command the Immortal Flames in the absence of the Flame General. While Raban has attended the Council of the Alliance, the leader should remain in the Hall of Flames. The woman has no business being Gridania, yet she is here nonetheless. On some pretense, she is up to something, mark my words. Even as we speak, I have a dozen men trawling the Flames records for evidence of her guilt. But if we can catch her red-handed, we shall all have, have all the proof we need. Brings me to the plan. I have people watching the city gates, the airship landing, the docks, and every point of egress. We cannot leave without our knowledge. What remains is to shadow her until she portrays her true purpose. And I rely upon your eyes, Sion. I just do things people tell me. I used to have a thing I'd do where I'd walk into the conversation and they'd say a bit and then I'd say Are you talking about the Spice Girls the movie? Or if I could be funny I tried and link it to something that was actually incredibly true until about a year of me doing this somebody said you know John it's called Spice World it's not called Spice Girls the movie and I was like what? Oh. But like you br oh, you've ruined it like no yeah, I realise I've been wrong all this time. But just rhythmically saying Spice Girls of the movie was just more amusing to me. Um, headed in the direction of the Blue Badger Gate. With me, Sion. And it's always just really amusing to imagine that a bunch of people are having a quite an in-depth conversation about the Spice Girls movie. I, a lot of things I just do for me. Uh, so Ral has entered Carline Canopy, meeting someone. Perchance, or could it be that she means to board an airship? Pray look for her within, if not on the upper floor. Uh, try the landing area below. One of mine is stationed here, and she may have been seen something for me. The name I shall remain here in case she appears. 
Worst room. Let me jump out on the... Ah! Invisible walls. This door opens? Hey, Valtyrian, such an unexpected pleasure. What brings you here? Ahem, a social visit, you say? How pleasant. I wish you didn't come in this way. I've noted every passenger, and none bore any resemblance. Don't let me keep you. Not even a bird. Oh, speaking of birds, I've got a dodo. See my dodo? I love him. Okay, let's carry on. No way to be seen, you say? Are you sure you did, did not? I, why? You said you didn't didn't board the airship. She did not come back either. From the seven hells, could she have gone? Roost! How could I forget? Uh, greetings, good sir. Might have interest you in some Montoy tonic, cup of day, and abuse a man with great vigour. Take my meaning. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, perhaps another time, friend. Wait, that necklace. You're a shinobi of Derma. <gasps> Woman you seek has left Gridania by way of West, West, West Shore Pier. She was attired as a merchant. These eyes are not so easily deceived. You may wish to, to take your search to the East Shroud. Most assured we shall continue to support you from the shadows. Thank the Twelve for the Germans. We were not for their unique talents. We would have disappeared without a trace. Uh, I want that one. The way the clothing system works. Uh, oh, it's just another bar. No, it's the bar shirt, John. You just you literally just put on the bar shirt. Oh, that's, oh yeah, no, we've had lots of those. Um, but yeah, can't undo the glamour. Is that actually the best thing? No, it's not. The way they do glamours in this game is weird. In flagrante delicto. A hunt leads us to the East Shroud Sarm, where I suggest we follow Rao's example and take the ferry from the West Shore Pier. You'll doubtless wish to remain, wish to make certain preparations to see to them while I go on ahead. I shall wait for you on the Sweet Bloom Pier. Oh, yes, I got this off the final boss of one of the uh, things. But no, I don't want to go. It's on us. The dungeon, that's the uh, uh, Cloud of Darkness, that's a tiny one. Right. Dust Bunny. Dust Bunny. Yay! I've got a tiny eye. Right. see out of that. Oh, yes. 
And let's get on. I've also got a bigger one. Not sure why I have an evil Mike Wazowski, yeah. But yeah, the reason these exist is because Dungeons & Dragons owns the right to a beholder, so they had to make sure their giant eye thing was legally distinct in Final Fantasy 1. My, my friends. Quarry makes for Hawthorne Hut. Raoul truly is the one you seek. We can expect that she means to make contact with the Galia masters there. Explanation is in order. You are no doubt aware that Galians have their own method of communicating over great distances. Well, our ingenious friends at Garland Ironworks have provided us with devices that will dis disrupt these communications. Uh, we have installed them, and the city states in doing so made it difficult to Imperial agents to correspond with their masters. Val well, will thus have no choice but to rendezvous with her Imperial contact directly, yet, uh, as a well known face in the immortal flames, she cannot move by thin iron without being recognized. It would only be a matter of time before she saw through the hurt disguise. Just for this reason, I believe she's chosen the Black Shard for her clandestine meeting the Alas in a common site here. Our comings and goings are not to like to turn I like not to turn any heads. Elezena, elves. As my scouts tells it, the Galeans have sent ages agents with a mind to destroy the devices and render such direct contact unnecessary. Fortunately our shinobi thus far have been successful in rebuffing their efforts. This is it, we only need to make for Hawthorne's hut, catch Raal in the act. My people report that our quarry has departed from Bramble Patch. Diary returns to the Niles when she came, so perhaps it's all for better. To convict someone of her standing, we should require damning evidence against her. What could be better to catch her in the act when she meets with Galia monsters? My countrymen and I shall wait in the shadows. Bed wearily, my friends. You get here before me. I need to set up compression on this microphone as well. This is a different mic, so it's not done yet. Just beyond Roal, uh, Roal is in conversation with an individual clad in the manner of an adventurer, an imperial intermediary, no doubt. This is it with me. Not fun, not. Hey, Marshal Elaine Royal, you are under arrest. <coughs> Treason and es espionage. I don't know why I said that so out of character. You followed, you bloody fool. Damnation. Huh. 
What well, armor? Unarmed, my lady. Scarcely garbage for battle. If you wish to fight, you are welcome to try. What is the meaning of this, Captain? Did you arrest me for strolling in the Twelve's Wood? On our last look, there was no crime, and neither was conversing with passing strangers. You feign ignorance, then. Very well. If you do think of something to say, then there'll be plenty of time to say it later. Now come quietly, or I shall make you wish you had. And she's got a point. She hasn't actually done anything wrong. I'll offer you no struggle after all I've done. Not to hide. Should I perhaps, I don't know, listen to the conversation first? Even a warrior of Ryle's renown could not have hoped to escape by force. Despite her claims, surrender does not speak to speak innocence, but an awareness that her position is untenable. Uh, with the ivory thus uprooted, it is hoped that the tendrils she entwined around the immortal flames will gradually wither and die. They hope the people of Ulder will have the grand company they deserve. But let us speak of the present. May, if I may ask, what will you do now, Nayev? So the signs seek a way into Ice Hearts for Sanctum. But I dare say you are easier to return. You're eager to return to the Rising Stone. Pray let me not keep you. They're not my countrymen, and I shall tend to the aftermath. You need not waste your talents here. Speaking of talents, have you considered training in the art of Shinobi? You have an aptitude for it, I believe. Then please give it some thought next time, my friend. Yeah, but I'd have to be a thief first. Thing, PDI. No, not that. No, no, no. I wanna. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back, Nive. I understand that often I had a task you. May I ask what it was? Charges of treason and espionage against Alain Rahal. I scarce believe it. Could there not have been a manner, manner of misunderstanding? No, it avails us not to dwell on it. Whatever the, the truth may be, we must trust the authorities to uncover it. Yeah. Uh, let us speak of another matter. I'm pleased to report that we've made progress in our efforts to find a way into Iceheart's sanctum. Well, a simple plan. Uh, why does this happen to me? Is that a simple plan? Uh, as you may recall, Iceheart used the Etherite in the depths of Snowcloak to teleport a short distance away, most likely to a sanctum of some description. It, it is there we suspect she means to summon Sheba using the crystal she stole from the House of Tom Caravan. Uh, the heretics believe that they are bringing about a second coming of the patron saint, but as we suspect, they mean to hold a summoning ritual of their kind to be by the beast tribes. It seems likely that the result will be something more akin to a primal. Suffice to say, they must be stopped, and stop them we shall. First, we must surmount an obstacle that Iceheart placed in our path. Ordinarily, it will be a simple matter to tap into the established Ethernet and <laughs> just get an Ethernet cable, and thereby follow our quarry. However, despite our best efforts, we have been unable to ascertain the position of the Etherite which she teleported. Prevailing theory is she destroyed the second etherite upon arrival, a reckless, desperate measure, but an, also an effective one. Uh, after discussing the ma matter at length with Henri uh, we have concluded that we lack the expertise to develop a solution. 
uh, which is why we've called upon the aid of one who does possess expertise, Colleen Gouvars, who is currently en route to Revenant Stall from Charlian. Uh, she should be arriving within the hour, in fact. Uh, since you're here, mayhap we could welcome her together. I'm certain she would appreciate the gesture. Let's make our way to the northern gates and await her coming. Are you juggling? How did you get here before me? Ta da! Minfilia, am I right? None other. I bid you welcome to Revenant's Toll, and thank you for traveling so far on such short notice. <laughs> As if I could ever say no to Urianje. Moonbreeder is an accomplished Charlian scholar and an authority on Etherite technologies. Scholar. She has played an invaluable role in our search for a means to capture Asian souls. Charmed, I'm sure. Let's return to the Rising Stones at once, then we have much to discuss. Why do you get to sit with the important people? Sister, a joyous reunion indeed. Well, of course, it is. Moon and I are like twin sisters, save in appearance and aptitude. <laughs> Everyone. 
If I could have your attention. We have with us an esteemed guest who has come from Shalian to assist us. I bid Moonbreeder join us here that she might share with us her extensive knowledge of etherites. Also, as many of you are already aware, she has been overseeing our research into white orosite, a sample of which she has been good enough to bring with her. There it is. Well, I had to come, didn't I? You'd have to be bloody daft to turn your nose up at a chance like this. Where better to conduct my final tests than a land so steeped in ether you can taste it? Tis plain the passage of the years hath done little to dampen thy youthful spirits. And nothing at all to reform thy youthful manner. Jay, where in the hells have you been hiding? Uh, unhand me. I come all this way, and that's what you have to say to me. I much preferred when you were pleading with me to drop everything and hurry to your side. What was it you said? None save thee can satisfy this need. Go on. Thine artless attempts to misrepresent mine all too innocent motives do thee little credit. <clears throat> mine intent, as well thou knowest, was but to impress upon thee the gravity of the circumstance. Lest thou doubt, a deiform entity shall shortly be summoned. Save if thou and no other grantest my compeers thine aid. I think it's this little scene, because they had Aurasite and he said the phrase Deiform. Is where I really realized uh, in Final Fantasy XII, oh, Deifacted! I know what Deifacted means now. Manufactured. You still haven't found it then? You're missing Etherite. We have not. No. Not. 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 I, I think that's a bit difficult for Americans to say. Not. We know that Iceheart teleported to an etherite not far from the first. No, he didn't. Yet, she even did after then. careful analysis, we could not locate the second beacon. They arrived just then. We now suspect that the heretics destroyed the second etherite to impede our pursuit. Our allies continue to scour Snowcloak for Icehot Sanctuary, but we have no guarantee that they will find it. Yet it must be found, for even now Icehot prepares to call upon Saint Shiva. I'm sorry, but if the etherite's been destroyed, then that's that. Sorry. Uh, sound like you're secretly Canadian. Although, you're absolutely sure she used the first etherite, are you? She didn't just use teleportation magics? One of our own bore witness to her escape. I can say with absolute certainty that Iceheart used the etherite. Don't know if that's not Canadian. I don't know any. In that case, there might be a way, so long as the ethereal current is still flowing. I can't think of where I've heard that before. Said like a sorry, like that. Truly, how? We use the current to recreate the beacon. As you know, etherites are a bit like lighthouses. We use them to reconstitute our physical forms when crossing the ethereal sea. Force. Without them, we'd lose all sense of direction, and our essence would dissipate. We're all good at the accents until they hit certain letters. However, we don't rely solely on these beacons. There are currents of ether which flow between them. Currents which help guide us to our destination. Now, these currents will gradually dwindle away to nothing if an etherite is destroyed. 
But if even a sluggish flow remains, we could theoretically use it to direct a surge of concentrated ether towards the void left by the beacon, and thereby fill it up again. Like opening the floodgates to fill a dry riverbed. Ah, uh, they did it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but would we not need a veritable reservoir of ether? They did a Star Trek analogy. Hey, <laughs> I love those. In concert, we might manage to channel a sufficient volume, yet that is not my chief concern. To direct the flow of so great a volume of ether with the requisite precision would be a nigh impossible task in itself. I barely succeeded in facilitating travel to an unattuned beacon. That which you describe sounds considerably more difficult. And dangerous. Every person who has attempted to teleport in this fashion has died in the process. They, however, did not have white aura sight at their disposal. I can use it to channel all the ether you can give me into the etherite. However, white aura sight cannot retain ether for an extended period of time, so we would need to infuse it immediately beforehand. Just so you know, I'd confidently give this plan better than even odds of success. And if the worst comes to worst, your people won't suffer. Uh -huh. Though it risks the lives of our best and brightest, we have not the time to seek other options. If the ethereal current still flows, we shall carry out Moonbreeder's plan. That's the spirit. Let's roll the dice. Oh. I have already informed Alphano uh, of our plan to recreate the, ba the bacon, delicious bacon, in the manner Moonbreeder described. He agreed to, despite the inherent danger, it represents our only hope of success. He also said he wished to meet you with Snowcloak before proceeding. I expect you will find him uh, waiting for you there when you arrive. I want you to know that I appreciate everything you've done on our behalf, Naev. And I have faith that you will return to us and always have. Because I've not been to foundation. I guess we'll be there, be there soon enough. Actually, it might be literal years before we get to foundation. Because uh, who knows when I'll play this again. I imagine when the next uh, update comes out, they'll do another free weekend. Sorry, I've not been saying much, but I'm um, just. It's late and I don't want to talk unnecessary. Unnecessarily. Good to see. Like, I, there's a lot of talking here. Good to see you are starting to wonder if there was any second. Uh, having any second thoughts? An ill bird, sensitive regards. By the way, he attends to the interrogation of uh, the, the Elaine. In old days, even as we speak, but I shall not distract you from the matter at hand. We can discuss the Abbey upon your return. I trust that uh, by which you say, ahem, the others are waiting for us in the for the site. If right, after you, Sion.
Ah, it worked, I think. By tuning to the, the right now, feel free, uh, feel for the current to try to locate the beacon. We've done, we've done all we can. I've now let us withdraw. When your final preparations are complete, you must seek out the beacon. We've created. If by the grace of the twelve you arrive safely, you must stop Iceheart before she summons Shiva. Hmm. Now give me an achievement once I've finished our one. Yeah. Cannot ignore the possibility that our actions have alerted Iceheart to our plans. Should that be the case, she may attempt to hasten the completion of the summoning ritual. If she succeeds, you will have little choice but to face Shiva in battle. Knowing a little of this saint, I cannot say if your strength will suffice. I will encourage you to call upon your allies. I may have reservations about waging, waging their lives on the success of Moon Breeder's experiment, but others will surely agree that desperate times call for desperate measures. Before you assemble your party, pray speak to that knight. I believe he's got a message for you. Sir Emmerich. Madam, uh, Sir Emmerich regrets that he could not be here in person. I ask that you read it, this letter. Ahem. Ishgard faces an unprecedented threat, yet in the hour of need it is not her knights who stand poised to defend her. May Valtyrian, the warrior of light, Saviour of Eorzea, your deeds this day shall not be forgotten. Whereas others would flee, you chose to remain. Where others would falter, you rise to the challenge. Where others would use their gifts, selfish ends, wield yours in service to a great cause. May Helone bless you, good fortune, and see you safely home. Ooh. Okay then. Let's queue up. Uh, I'll try queuing up to all of them first. Halitali. Um, no, I shan't. I'd like to do how to tally, but let's not waste time. Okay. Why does that have a... Th oh. I mean, it kind of looks like we're going to be fighting Shiva. There's a picture of Shiva. Um... Right. Oh, no, no, no. I'm gonna do this as well. Hang on, I fought the Shiva. Hang on, didn't I do that? I mean, I did that already. I wasn't carrying Artemis. Right, uh, cancel the party. I mean, they definitely did that fight already. It's marked as done. But we could do with the 10 more anyway, so. to Elder. Oh, welcome back. We might be fighting Shiva. I mean, if the queue... It is almost 2am though, so uh, we might not be fighting Shiva. And if we can't, that means I'll pretty much have to end the stream. Um, what am I doing? Oh yes. Uh, I guess I want to find this. I, sh I shall walk back. I, uh, yeah, I, I'm just, this is just where I naturally land on wickedness. Yeah, 
quest. Yeah, I think I finished at three, so it would have been pretty late. the glamours. I believe I can do that. Experience boost. Interesting. Well, I'm not going to need to be a higher level to get. Yeah, Glamour Dispeller uh, and Prism are here. So I need to be. I need to here. I don't, I, I don't know what this means, game. You have to tell me what this. Oh, I think I have to be promoted two more times. Ah. That's kind of annoying. Um, well, it's something we can do if we run out of other things to do. That's cool. Yes. We're doing. Flustered man. There you go, there's your 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 cutting supplies. That's um, the hair from Fun Fantasy Thirteen. How do you feel, madam? Why, well, it's as if, in but a single magnificent moment, I travelled beyond the void and returned to life as the embodiment of all that is beautiful in this world. Could it be? Yes, it is. How else to explain such power? You are the one who's who's coming was foretold. Yes, you are the aesthetician. In the flesh, madam, I'm Jandelaine, crafter of Coifus so divine, 
that Minfina herself doth to begrudge my clientele their beauty. Well, uh, not me. Beauty reborn. Yay! Happy bunny. You are the one. Yes, okay. This is how we unlock. Uh, hairstyles in this game. But you have to buy an item. There it goes. Um, so we can get our hair cut while we're waiting for the dungeon. We've only we can only do it once though. Hmm. Anything else I'm doing here? I think I've got to go to the inn. Uh, let's teleport. Hmm, I suspect I'll look at all the haircuts and then just keep the one I've already got. Change your haircut because it'll kick us out of the queue. Never mind. Um, go to there instead. I mean, there's a chance it just straight up won't. Uh, you know, it might be too late for it's. It's, it's lasting on a Sunday. People might not be dungeoneering. Secretly a cat. This is what cats secretly are. Dun -dun. Oh yeah, 
fates are probably something I should actually do. Um, not a level 10 fate though. That'd be pointless. Oh yeah, this was really sad. So I think I said it before. So like around level 20, when they go like, oh, you know, there were dungeons that exist and you have to go and for you and you have to go into dungeons. Oh, look, there's four people over there in a dungeon team. You'll be just like them. And like, so you do your first dungeon. Level 30, you come back and you find out one of their four have died and they've just all split up. And it's like, oh, actually, dungeoneering is quite hard. And, um, and, and they all like... The last dungeon they did was this particular dungeon here that I'm stepping into. Um, uh, so it's like, oh, but you've mastered dungeons, but that not everyone makes it. And But they make a hard version of this dungeon where it turns out, like, they've all, like, not only did they split up and die, but, like, like one of them tried, like, resurrecting the other one and, like, it became a sort of evil undead dungeon. And this guy's the only survivor of the team anymore. Um... Yeah, it just, like, doubles down on, like, how unlucky that particular team are. But it's a really good way of doing a dungeon. Where you're like, oh, it's really sad. Because uh, you have to attend a, a, mon a zombie wedding. Well, I mean, I say attend. You're trying to stop it from happening. Can't be. I wasn't expecting to do that. Yeah, uh, and she's like the final... That girl's the final boss of the dungeon. Um, and she's like trying to... Uh, I can't remember what she was doing now. Trying to summon a monster or something. But like, when you see her originally, she's just like this young girl. It's quite... Like, they're just a naive adventure party. And somehow, like, they're somehow they're summoning Cthulhu and stuff. And... Uh, like she's she died in the uh, fight as well. For some reason, we couldn't step stop her from stepping off the side. But uh, she she might be a a ghost still, I guess. Um, I could not see the way out. <laughs> I still can't see the way out. I'm. Am I? Where's the way out? <laughs> What's there? Yeah, I wasn't expecting Final Fourteen to do that. Like, I've literally never seen anything in this game do anything remotely like that. What am I doing now? Oh, I don't think that party is forming. That's a shame. I'm... I should have just kept playing before and not taking a break. I might get lucky. Uh, there's a bunch of quests we've been meaning to do, so. Guess I'll do them.
Og hvad skal du betale? Og oh, uh, oh yeah, I have unlocked ventures. Okay, cool. I'm not reading anything that's not the main quest. Um, because I deserve, <laughs> I deserve breaks as well. Mm. One dungeon. I just need this one last dungeon. Um, although I, I, I probably shouldn't have put in the Hydra. How many have got two tanks and not four hunters? Uh, what are we doing? 